Well, for more on China's consumers and the consumption upgrade, we're joined by Dan McClory, Managing Director and Head of China for Bowsted Securities. Welcome back to the show. Thanks a lot. Happy to be here. So, Dan, when we hear the term consumption upgrade, what exactly does that encompass? I think it has to do with the quality level of consumption. I think it has to do with moving from the must-haves to the nice-to-haves. So food, housing being a little bit secondary right now to things like travel and entertainment, which are primarily more discretionary. I think it's quality and price point of moving up the consumer food chain. Now, as we have World Consumer Rights Day, there is this spotlight on brands, not just on quality, but also on safety. And then you also have this aspect of kind of naming and shaming the companies who have fallen short. So when it comes to China, how do companies prepare for or adapt to this? Well, you, you really have a very immediate and direct acid test when you bring your product out in China. Um, it's because of what we heard earlier in the show uh, about so much e-commerce taking place, which is instantaneous. Uh, the reaction is real time. It's right now. Uh, you don't really have a, a great opportunity to uh, represent yourself. Uh, so what we're hearing about on some of the name and shame lists are, are categories, and you mentioned a couple of them. Uh, others have to do with micro lending, for example, to college students. Some have to do with healthcare products that are targeting the elderly. Um, and, and of course, increasing prices in the ride-sharing services after so much of a subsidized launch from DD and at one time Uber, um, those are also giving rise to concerns, if not complaints. And what would you say are the biggest concerns for consumers in China? Well, I think is the uh, prosperity, is the increase in disposable income, is that going to continue? Um, so what would, what would impact that? You know, there's, there will be some slight cooling in the rise of housing prices, and that's going to lead to less household wealth or the perception of household wealth. So that's one. Um, there's very likely going to be a tightening of credit, consumer credit, uh, for risk mitigation, as we've heard about coming out of the two sessions. So I think like any almost westernized consumer, the Chinese consumer is going to start thinking, well, how long is this going to keep going? Uh, all indications are it's going to keep going for a very long time. But those are a couple of potential drags um, that could negatively impact consumer sentiment. Now, we know that digital technology plays a huge role in China and, and consumer behavior. So in terms of how that might affect um, behaviors when it comes to the consumption upgrade, how do you see that playing out? Yeah, that's a great question. Because um, again, I think in this whole category, you see an area where it's gone from sort of made in China to created in China, uh, which is the innovation economy. And think of all the areas in e-commerce where China has pioneered. I think of the event-driven occasions for people to go and spend money like Singles Day, for example. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's those types of uh, events that cause people to go and, and, and buy more and spend more uh, when they probably really didn't have a whole lot of impetus to do that. Uh, so that's something that is, is you know, trying to spread its way around the world. So far, it's, it's mainly just a Chinese phenomenon. But I think that you also have online enablement of offline purchases like cashless payment systems. You know, China is ahead of, you know, not just the U.S., but Scandinavia and other parts of the world in cashless payments. And that has also facilitated the spread of purchases and buying. It's easier than grabbing your wallet or having to get cash from an ATM. Uh, so I, I like to talk about those areas where China has truly innovated and, and created, and it's now leading to this rise in the consumer economy. And, you, you know, one more that's really worth noting is China exports its consumers very well. China consumers travel. They spend almost a trillion dollars a year when they do luxury goods. They travel and buy um, overseas educations. Right. Um, there are all kinds of ways that the Chinese consumer has exported him or herself to the rest of the world. So as we look at some of the upgraded products that are made in China products, in terms of competition, how do they rank against how people perceive foreign goods versus made in China goods within China? That line is, is quickly blurring. There used to be a tremendous distinction, and, and there would almost be a value judgment of, oh, this is made in China, this is made elsewhere. Uh, I can't tell you, you know, just from a U.S. consumer standpoint, how many times I go into a store and everything, not just from electronics, but clothing and other things, where it's, it's made in China, it's incredibly high quality. Uh, brand name designers are increasingly producing garments and, and uh, higher-end goods in China. 
uh, and they're not having to explain it, and they're not having to, uh, you know, pretend they're a second-class citizen. Um, that's, that, that's resonating. Um, I think some of the areas where there's been tremendous growth in China, you look at uh, alternative-powered vehicles. I mean, that's a major industry. You look at uh, robotics and, and, and the growth that it's seen in the production of robots, for example. Um, so I, I think there are certain, not just niches, but there's entire areas where China really has distinguished itself from the rest of the world, and they can point to some big successes. All right. Well, thank you so much. Dan McClory there of Bowstead Securities.